Good morning, everyone. We've made it to Friday. Okay, so today is Friday, April 3rd. Um, for me, this is the day I will hopefully get to go pick up my groceries. This has been a long going drama all week. I know it's a drama many of you are facing. Um, I am extraordinarily appreciative of the shoppers at Wegmans who are making it possible for me to press a bunch of buttons, drive up, pop my trunk, and pick up my groceries. It is a huge stress relief. Um, it took me a long time to um, acknowledge and accept that, yep, I'm in the high-risk category. Um, but yeah, I did. <laughs> So, no grocery shopping for me. Pick up only. Um, anyway, let's move on. Because, yeah. Um, I'm going to see if I can make this through without getting all sniffly and crazy. It is quite the allergy morning. So, let's go back to yesterday. I finished up yesterday's um, tomatoes that ended up turning into wee little apples. By the time their shapes were coming together, I'm like, yeah, these guys are apples. So if you look at yesterday's blog post, uh, there's a photo of the finished apples. But I also took a photo of the wool pieces I used for the leaves and the stems. Now the stems are just rectangles. I rolled them up, did a whip stitch along the edge. I went down and back. And then I just attached them through the top of the... um apples. So the thread actually goes through the base of the stem and the leaves all the way down through the core here and then back up. Okay. I probably did that a half dozen times until everybody was nice and secure. Um, I wouldn't say they're cat or kid safe at this point, but they're definitely shelf safe. Okay. Um, if you're making these for cats or kids, you want something much more secure and you're noticing I'm saying cat. Um, Clara loves this type of thing. Uh, she loved stealing strawberries when I made them, uh, particularly if they're full of wool or made of wool. Uh, I honestly think she loves the wool more than the catnip. Um, her toys now are made with polyfill and catnip, but she really does prefer the wool. Oh, let me tell you, compare, combine wool and catnip, we're gold. Okay, so let me set these little guys over here. I'm going to have to pick out the right wooden bowl or something for um, my little fruits as I'm finished. Okay, another thing I mentioned yesterday was my little pin keeper. So this little wooden piece has a magnet pair on the back. See? Like that. Now, um, I think she's got more of these that are wood over at Chestnut Bay. I'll put the link below. Um, and I'm remembering there being another material too besides the wood. But this little guy's a little kitty. And she had lots of other designs. And I really like these. So you just pull off the magnet. And it's just like you do a name tag. So it sits there. And then your needle and pins stick on there really nice. Um... That way you're not sticking them in your mouth or sticking them in the furniture or things like that. Okay, so today we're going to make chili peppers. Okay. Now the same pattern is going to work for carrots as well. Hi, Clara. So the templates, which I'll post again, this is the one you want. It's the elongated kind of triangle with the curved top. Now this size is gonna be good for the chili pepper, okay? You could go a little larger if you want a carrot. You can go a little smaller if you want other shaped chili peppers. Um, and then the tops on mine are leaves for the chili peppers. And then I did long strands for the carrot. All right, so what do I wanna do first? Of course, you don't have to Cut it exactly how I did. Um, like I said yesterday, this is one of those projects where variation is a good thing. You can go bigger, you can go smaller, you can go fatter, you can go leaner, longer, whatever you want for this. 
Now I'm using um, the cotton velveteen again from yesterday. Of course, you're welcome to use what you have on hand. Um, I think striped chili peppers could look really cool, especially cut on the bias. Carrots. I think carrots would look cool if they had some texture going on. Hi, you. I'm realizing what I'm going to regret not bringing over is something to poke the um, batting down into the end. You trying to come and help? All right, so I've taken my triangle. Let's back up. I'm sorry. Take your triangle. Okay, you're gonna fold it in half and we're gonna sew along the whole long edge. Okay, so here I am. I'm gonna sew along the long edge. Uh. You can use your running stitch or if you want something a little more secure. A back stitch. Okay. Now you can start at the top or the bottom. I am starting at the top today. One of the advantages of starting at the bottom is you can thread your needle once, sew along the side all the way up to the top, and then your needle and thread are in the right spot for the next part. I gotta remember to keep bringing my hands up. Sorry about that. As you can tell, I tend to be a down low <laughs> sewer. I tend to sew on my lap or on the tabletop. I'm so much of a lap sewer naturally at home. When I'm out in the village, I have to remember to, to keep things up on the table and, and not try to put them on my lap. Um, I tend to hold things on my lap here, like I'll set my scissors or my thread on my lap. And here, not a big deal if I get up and adjust and it falls on the floor. In the museum, if I put something on my lap and it rolls down, I gotta say, things tend to get accelerated, a good speed when they come off of a skirt over a cage. And just about anything will get some distance. Then you gotta go figure out where it went. And then you gotta bend over and get it. Now for the most part, bending isn't a big deal for me in terms of my corset. But in the years since my gallbladder surgery, um, well, the bending is not always the best. It can get quite comical, I would say. There we go. I stabbed myself on camera. <laughs> so yes, you're gonna notice I don't have a thimble. Um, I've gotten out of the habit of using a thimble since I started doing the millinery because the way I hold my needles for that is different. I don't push from the ends or control the same way I do when I um, am working with fabric. So I really have gotten out of that habit. Um, obviously there are some disadvantages to that. All right. Now, this is one of those cases where I don't think I'm gonna get quite to down to the end that I cut. But that end fabric is going to be, what in the world did I do there? There we go. That little end fabric is actually going to help with stuffing the end of this little guy. So I did it again. Sorry. And here I can just tie off now that I made it down to the end.
Okay. There we go. We have one triangle, long and skinny, sewn from end to end. All right, so now we gotta turn this right side out. This might be a little more difficult than what we did yesterday. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab um, something to help with this. I should have left you Clara on camera. All right, so I grabbed an old thing and a new thing. Okay, so I grabbed a broken crochet hook with kind of like a rather damaged end. And then I bought, grabbed a bodkin that has a ball end. Now this bodkin I got from Chestnut Bay. Can you tell I go there a lot? So I'm going to push this all the way through. What I should have done is made one of these last night. <laughs> because of course this has to be challenging this morning. There we go. It's usually not this hard. I promise. problem with the crochet hook is that end does have some sharp pieces so it keeps wanting to like poke through. The advantage of this guy with a little ball is it doesn't want to poke through. All right. If you get down to the end and that tip just doesn't want to come through you can use your needle. See if you'll let me coax him out. A little bit more there. All right, not so much. I guess that's as far as we're going to go. We're going to have a little chilly here. Okay, so there he is, turned right side out, and his end is all open. Today I will use the polyfill. Now this isn't going to take quite as much. Okay, so there's our size comparison. And for this, I'm just going to start stuffing. I'm going to go a little bit here because I want to make sure I can get this stuff down into the bottom. Use my fingers first. Use my bald bodkin. See how that works. Okay. Bald bodkin goes right through the polyfill. The other end of the crochet hook. That's what might do it. Okay, so polyfill is very slippery. The end of the scissors. I'll be able to do any little shaping after, of course. The whole idea is to get a tiny little bit down into the end of our chili pepper first. Now you want him firm. But not bursting because we got one more piece we're going to do with the chili pepper. Your carrot you're going to want to be completely firm. Go all the way to the top. All right, there we go. Okay, so grab your needle and thread again. Give yourself a good knot. 
I'm going to close the top. You'll notice how I didn't stuff quite all the way to the very top. It's because I have to gently coax the edge under. Okay. Start on the inside with my needle. And you're just going to do a running stitch around the fold, okay? So there we are. Can you see that? Okay. This is just going to gather up the top. Now for some of these, it will seem bulky, but we'll tighten that up. I like just to turn in a little bit at a time. This is where having a little bit of fingernails does help. I generally don't keep fingernails because it's a straw. gone all the way around okay and I'm just going to tighten this up okay see how it draws in there together once I've done that I'm going to cross the top hoping you can see that I'm gonna do that a few times so in one side out the other and then rotate it kind of like a pizza pie basically going in between each of the folds, tightening this little guy up at the top. And it just brings everything in nice and snug. And yes, I'm using black thread this morning. I was thinking that might be easier for you guys to see. But it still does disappear. So it might have been redundant. Okay, so that's what that looks like, all right? And all that thread will get covered up when you put your leaves on. So I'll just knot that off. All right. So I'm gonna show you next how to do that wee little curve. You won't have to do the curve if you're doing a carrot. But you might want to curve in there if you have a chili pepper or two. I like to put my curve at the bottom. I can always put it at the top. This is definitely one of those projects that I really enjoy and I could do constantly. All right, so you want a big knot for this one. You're going to bring your thread up through the bottom if you're going for the bottom. Just kind of try to hide the knot in the tip of your chili pepper, okay? I'm coming up about a half inch, and I'm going to pull that through so you don't see the knot, okay? See where I'm at there? And now I'm just going to do a couple running stitches in the seam that I already did. Okay. And those running stitches will cause him to curve just a little bit. If you want to curve a little more, pull them tight and then run back down through. I think if I didn't do straw, <laughs> I would probably have baskets and baskets of fruits and vegetables laying around. Yeah, I don't like his curve quite so much as some of the others. 
Oh, these are right. I'm going to do a couple more stitches here just to kind of get it a little happier. So now the little chili pepper is ready for some leaves. So I'll finish off this chili pepper and one more today. And then tomorrow I said we'll do pears. Um, noticed I don't have pear colored velvet. So I think I will try to get out the um, some of the rest of the, the white that I've got. And if we have time, I'll show you some of the chalk. I I think I know where the chalk is, but I'm not sure. Okay, so have a good day today, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.